Very warm welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We're just coming out of all the buzz from the Auto Expo and it just shows you that it's going to be a busy year. Lots of new products coming our way. And I can tell you, it will be many, many cars that you definitely will want to see and bikes. One such new product will be the electric version of this car, EC3 from Citroen. That review is coming up in just a bit on the program. But let's start with what many of you also saw debuting at the Expo. That is the RX, the brand new generation of the SUV from Lexus. We're one of the few who's had a chance to drive it and this is a pretty exclusive review. I spent a lot of time with the car driving it in the US. Here is that review. If it was sedans that made Lexus a hit at its inception, the past two decades have belonged to its SUVs and the RX compact crossover in particular. One of the brand's most successful models, the RX, is now in its fifth generation. I am in the United States, the most key market for the RX, to drive different variants of the car. The new RX looks like an evolution of the fourth gen, but that face, while immediately recognizable as an RX, is distinct thanks to the grille finish. The most drastic difference in terms of styling is really in the face. It's a lot more upright and just look at that grille treatment. You get different finishes depending on the trim. This one is of course the 350H and you can see that there's a lot of potential here for customization as well. The color is sonic copper. Well, it could become a bit of a signature for the car in many ways and uh, it's getting talked about a lot. A little sharper on the DRL as well and that's when you start to see that the rest of the car well, this new generation, the design language is more evolutionary on the whole. So barring the face, which is really drastically different, along the sides, you see a similar sort of proportion and including the way you see the chrome garnish swooping down the black glossy element. That's kind of a hark back to the previous generation. It's a good connect to that car in many ways. The overall length hasn't changed. So the dimensions are pretty similar, except the big change is the rear track, which is wider and you have the wheelbase that has actually grown, which gives you more legroom on the inside. The new spindle body design looks sharp and the car looks ample in size. The end-to-end -end LED light bar at the rear also looks sharp and is well finished too. The triple beam adaptive LED headlights are also very cool. Lexus has done away with the optional three-row format and now only offers a five-seater on the RX. It has multiple variants and for the first time, a plug-in hybrid too. India won't get the plug-in, but we're getting two hybrids. So like with all Lexus hybrids, this one too has the EV mode, which means for a short duration of time, you can drive on pure battery power, but then very quickly, there you go. You get that little raspy note of the engine kicking in. It's a little harsher than I would have liked it to be, but then the engine kicks in really quickly as well. And uh, the overall transition is, of course, just as you expect, nice and smooth and very quick. It is a system that's been developed over the years by Toyota and, of course, by Lexus. And uh, it is something that's almost synonymous in many ways, especially in the premium space with the Lexus brand. So like most Lexus models, the RX gets the conventional hybrid 350H with a self-charging battery system but you also get a pure petrol version or the 350 with the same 2.5 liter engine as the base variant in the US. Focus of the hybrid system is really to enhance efficiency, right? I mean, that's the whole reason you're driving a hybrid in the first place, because you want to maximize every drop of fuel and make it count for more. So on a Lexus as well, therefore, especially a car like the RX, uh, the focus remains on comfort, cruising, very smooth driving. Remember that the brand really sort of grew in a very American context at the start. And that's why on the RX, you get exactly that character as its staple. Put it into sport mode and things get a little more interesting, a lot more engaging. And especially at the rear, you find the car is a lot stiffer and uh, the handling is a lot more sorted than it was on the previous generation. The good news is we are getting two of those four variants and they are the better loaded ones. This one is loaded with ADAS. There's a lot that you can get on the car. The Lexus logo up front is which uh, is where you have 
the housing for all the uh, scanners and cameras. And uh, you've also got two new cameras that sit uh, for a frontal view on the exterior mirrors. And so you get a more updated, a little bit more of a precise system than you used to in the past. And of course, it helps you with things like lane keep and uh, even lane change assist. There is also a new function that's been added for the first time in this ADAS system, which not only keeps you in your lane, but if the system detects some kind of an obstacle on one side of the lane, like say a cyclist or even a pedestrian, well, it will keep your car in the lane, but it will go to the extreme other side of the lane so as to be able to overtake that obstacle without any fear of uh, colliding with it. The cabin on the new RX is roomy and swish. Its layout will remind you of the new NX, since that car kicked off the new design look for the Lexus SUV interiors last year. Big touchscreen and virtual cluster are the massive change, besides some design details, of course. On this new generation, you do get the new updated driver interface, a whole lot of tech, and this whole cockpit layout is very much like what we saw on the NX, which was the first car to get it, or the first SUV from Lexus to get it. Now, with the RX, you get all of that, and uh, you know, when you're driving it for a while, you realize that there are a few quirks. Like, for example, if I want to change drive modes while driving, well, you got to sort of, I'm, you know, I'm in Apple CarPlay right now, I have to get out of Apple CarPlay by pressing the Lexus icon, then go to the car menu. Now it's very distracting, I'm taking my eyes off the road, then get into drive mode and then select the mode I want, eco, normal or sport. There's also a new custom, which is like the individual mode in some other cars where you can pretty much customize the different parameters, throttle response, the suspension comfort, etc., uh, to your liking. But the point is getting to it through that detailed menu, not so fun. But wait, it's got to be more intuitive than that, right? The good news, you've got these little trackpads here on the steering and you can set some of these buttons for what you like. So in this particular case, there's a little shortcut right here where I can use the head-up display and go from normal to sport in a flash. That's what you want. Yes, this is an obviously improved RX then in most senses of that word. The cabin, the tech, the engineering, but what about the performance? Response in sport is a lot better. The car moves very quickly and on the whole, you do enjoy driving it in a more engaging fashion in sport for sure. Though I have to say that even uh, when you have it in normal, uh, the performance remains quite okay. It's quite nice. And uh, it's only in eco that you feel the car sort of holding back intentionally so. With the new generation, I find the handling has also improved quite a lot. In fact, like I was saying earlier, the car just feels a lot more sure of itself on the road as a result. And so uh, that I think is to me the big takeaway, the part I'm enjoying the most, because remember that dimensions haven't really changed, so the wheelbase has gotten longer. So I was a little worried about how taut the handling would feel. Luckily, it does good. And on that topic, it's actually a relief that they didn't just make this car bigger like many cars do get with new generations. The RX has been unveiled at the Auto Expo with prices and a market launch expected by March. And I have to say that while it was just the 350H that was initially pegged for India, getting the 500H as well was a smart move by Lexus India. Electric cars are increasingly catching everyone's fancy in India and more affordable the car is, it grabs even more eyeballs. The latest set of wheels from Citroen is one such example. 
Barely six months after launching the C3 hatch in the market, the French car maker has brought in the electric version of the car, which is simply called the EC3. It becomes the third offering from the brand in India after the C5 Aircross and of course the C3. In the way it looks, the EC3 isn't drastically different from its petrol counterpart. It does give you that SUV character, though Citroen never says by itself that this is an SUV or a mini SUV, but there are many elements that point to that. So the high ground clearance, use of cladding all over the car, roof rails, they all give this car a nice SUV butch factor. The DRLs continue to make heads turn even on this electric car because they are the same as the petrol car. And Citroen says that the majority of sales on the petrol C3 have come from dual tone variants. So exclusively for the electric, they've launched three new dual tone options as well, including this orange with white roof looks very nice. And the most important part, the charging port, it's here on the driver side front fender. In all, you get three exterior packs with as many as 47 customization options to give the car that exclusive look. You can also choose from a list of 70 accessories and two interior themes. The cabin too is largely similar to the petrol version, but yes, there are some fresh elements as well. The cabin is largely similar to the petrol counterpart, but two key differences, of course, the instrument cluster has changed for the kind of information it gives you. Uh, so the state of charge, how much battery is remaining, driving modes, how region is working, all that is displayed on the cluster while you're on the move. And of course, for the first time, you see an automatic gearbox on uh, the C3. So this is the uh, automatic gearbox on the car, which reminds you of bigger SUVs from the brand. So which is nice, a nice design element there as well. The big 10-inch touchscreen remains the same when you compare to the petrol version of the C3. It's nice, it's clear, it's very colorful as well, good, easy to use. And yes, you also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless. So that's important. Uh, the EC3 also comes uh, with as many as 35 connectivity features. So that's a good addition on the car. But I have to say that there are some features that were missing on the petrol version of the car, even the top variant like climate control or electrically adjustable outside mirrors those are features that could have been considered for this electric version of the car but sadly even this one misses out on those features the cabin is quite spacious something that has always worked for the c3 a wheelbase of 2450 millimeters helps in this regard so whichever row you decide to spend time in you will not be disappointed the car comes with a boot space of 315 liters and yes, a spare wheel is provided too. But of course, the biggest question is how this electric car drives. And Citroen decided that the best place for us to sample this new car is a test track away from the madness of a city commute. The EC3 runs on a 29.2 kilowatt hour battery pack that is crucially bigger than the battery packs seen on uh, the Tiago EV or the Tigor EV from Tata Motors, the main rivals uh, of this car in the market. So uh, the claim range also is slightly higher when compared to Tiago EV, 320 kilometers to be precise. So that's a good number uh, for a car in this segment. Talk about power, you get 56 brake horsepower and 143 Nm of peak torque and these numbers suit the car well especially for the city conditions especially because you get all the talk right from the word go a big talking point on the ec3 is its battery that is air cooled and not oil cooled and question marks are being raised if it is ready to take on the dreaded indian summer well citroen says that the car has been tested at temperatures up to 55 degrees celsius so the car is ready so to take on whatever climatic conditions that will be thrown at it. Uh, now Chennai in January is in the ideal temperature or conditions to test this and so far it's looking good. But yes, we will have to wait for the months of June, May, June, July, especially up north in the country to see how exactly this battery performs, especially because LFP batteries are known for better thermal management and this is not a big uh, motor as well. So it 
most likely will be quite manageable but yes as i said we'll have to wait and watch on how the car performs in the indian summer a cross track is also the perfect place to test the acceleration and the car is indeed quick it races from 0 to 60 km per hour in 6.8 seconds and top speed is 107 km per hour and both these numbers will suit the car just fine in city traffic but maybe on the highway you will be left wanting for more so the good thing with the EC3 is that it's got two driving modes so you can choose between them depending on if you want better performance or if you want better efficiency or you want a longer range and you do feel a considerable difference when you press the switch right next to the gear shift uh, in the center console so you can switch between the modes easily while driving and then the difference is there for you to see so if you want a longer range of course switch to the eco mode the performance will get affected slightly but if you have to drive and this is not a driver's car or an enthusiast car but you will still get a much better drive experience when you drive the car in the standard mode to aid in a longer range you also have regenerative braking on the car so that helps in ensuring a slightly higher range and what uh, the brand has also done is that they have increased the size of the brakes the disc on the front and the drums on the rear so that also helps in better regen on the hatch In case you up for a quick recharge the EC3 will go from 10 to 80% in less than an hour using a DC fast charger. On the other hand using a 15 ampere plug point will fully charge the car in 10 and a half hours. The brand is offering a warranty of 7 years or 1 lakh 40000 kilometers on the battery of the EC3. For safety the car gets two airbags ABS with EBD and reverse parking sensors. Both the cars that have come to India from Citroen before the EC3, the C5 and the C3 petrol uh, are known to give you great ride quality, and that is a story that continues on the EC3 as well. So you are guaranteed a good, comfortable drive in this electric hatch as well. Uh, the significant difference is the weight when you compare this to the petrol car. So this is around 300 kgs heavier, primarily due to the batteries that are put in this car. Uh, and the ground clearance has also gone down by 10 mm so that uh, has somewhat marginally changed the handling of the car so this track is a good place to test that you know we've been able to throw it around some fast sweeping corners uh, on this track and i'll have to say that between the petrol and uh, the electric hatch the petrol still feels more superior when it comes to handling The Citroen EC3 comes across as a reliable city car that offers good amount of practicality and acceptable drivability. It does check most boxes and if you're looking for an affordable EV in the market, the options are limited and this could be a good bet. Bookings begin on January 22nd while the prices will be announced in February. We expect the hatch to start at 9 lakh rupees ex showroom and at that price it will become a good desirable alternative to the Tata Tiago EV more affordable electric cars that is what our market has really been waiting for so please react to the EC3 tell me how you like it you can reach me at sid patankar on twitter or instagram with that it's a wrap on the show join me next week and please wear your seat belts please wear your helmets